Purple Druid presents Tabletop Wargaming, and today we are going to talk about a concept called scaling. And you use you use scaling for playing out miniature battles on the tabletop, or on a VTT, or Theater of the Mind, in order to make large-scale battles easier to manage on the table. And so what we have here are two different forces, both of which consist of 61 miniatures, which you can see here. These miniatures are Lord of the Rings Risk pieces that I've glued down onto one inch, well, I'm sorry, 25 millimeter by 25 millimeter wooden bases. They're plywood and they have rounded corners, so they're easy to pick up and are a little more durable. Each of these forces would represent literally 60 men, as it were, plus a leader, as you can see here by the different color. And if you wanted to do a battle with them, this would be somewhat unwieldy because of the number of miniatures involved. Now, if you wanted to do a larger battle, with say a thousand men on each side, then you would need obviously a thousand figures and that's a lot of pieces. So we use a technique called scaling in order to represent different numbers of troops with less miniatures, fewer miniatures. So for instance, this unit here of 60 men, if you were to scale it to chainmail scale, could be represented by these three figures, which represent soldiers at a one to 20 scale, which is to say one figure represents 20 men. So this entire unit here can be represented by this. And let's go ahead and add that hero in. And so when you Put these figures together you put them on a special base called a stand and now you have a stand of four figures representing this army or unit as you will of 61 men represented by 61 miniatures scaling like this allows you to do much much larger battles using fewer miniatures, and less real estate on the table. And that's it. That's as simple as scaling gets. And to show you why that's so important, we are going to roll some dice and do a quick battle. So we'll start out <clears throat> keeping things simple. And we'll just use our men take out these heroes for right now and we will use these as these will be the orcs and these will be the elves and in the chainmail game elves count as heavy foot which is to say they have a medium level of armor and they count as heavy foot for attack and defense Likewise, the orcs count as heavy foot for attack and defense. Now, what that means is that they will, uh, depending on how the combat chart comes out, they'll roll a die, basically one die for each figure in the front rank. So if these two units were to move together and fight using the chainmail rules. We have 10 versus 10, and they do not have 
spears for this example. So each will only get to fight in the front rank, which is to say 10 models. Now, according to the combat tables, heavy foot versus heavy foot, they roll one die per man and a six kills. So to put that in perspective, if the elves were light foot, then the orcs would roll one die per man and a five or six would be a kill. And then the elves versus the orcs being light foot versus heavy foot, they would only roll one die per two men or five dice and then a six would kill. So there is definitely a difference depending on your, uh, your state, which type of troop you are. So we have heavy foot versus heavy foot, one die per man, and the six will kill. So we'll roll 10 dice for the elves. And three, six, ten. We will roll 10 dice for the orcs. All right, one, two, three, three sixes for the orcs, and we have no sixes for the elves. So this means that three elves will be removed as casualties, and no orcs will be removed. Now, as these are units of 60, a very small number of casualties, and so the morale effect will also likely be very small. Now, as an alternative, we can do scaled combat where we have a three versus three. In which case, the orcs will roll three dice and the elves will roll three dice, and the six will be a kill. And in this case, no one gets a six, and so they will remain deadlocked. So in round two, the orcs get two sixes, the elves get one, And now you can see that this is a more substantial influence on the battle. And when it comes down to the morale being outnumbered now two to one, the elves will most likely fail their morale check and fall back. So you can see here the difference. It's much faster and simpler and requires less miniatures to use the scaling method for combat. Now this, this might look silly because we're only doing one unit, but if you could imagine doing a larger battle involving several hundred models on each side. So now here we have a battle with four units on each side and each stand has a different number of troops. These three each have eight figures, which would be 160 men. And this one has four figures, so that would be 80 men, 80 cavalry. This one has 12, so that would be 240. And then here each of these is 60 cavalry. And then here we have six, which is 120 infantry. Now you can see where if these groups were to move into battle or charge each other, suddenly we're rolling many, many more dice for each of these battles, or each of these combats, I should say, um, when it comes time for the melee portion. And so what would happen here, we have our elves and we have our orc cavalry. If they were to battle,
I guess versus medium horse would get one die per three men. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're going to get two dice. And then the medium horse versus heavy foot, they're going to get two dice per man. So the orcs will get six. And in addition, the orcs will cause a casualty on a five or a six. So suddenly this battle, even though at scale, it looks like the elves definitely outnumber the orcs. Because the orcs are mounted, they will have a serious advantage over the elves. The elves get to roll their two dice, and they get one six, so they will cause a casualty. The orcs will roll six dice, and they need a five or a six, and they get one, two, three, and so that will cause three casualties on the elf side. And then, of course, we roll for morale to uh, determine the effects of the battle. But here you can see the battle goes much faster, you're rolling fewer dice, and it makes the execution of a much larger scale battle much, much easier. All right, so that's going to do it for our brief demonstration today. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or want something in particular covered in this series going forward, please leave a comment down below. As always, please hit like and subscribe so that we can continue to spread this information far and wide. Thanks again, and have a great day.